Hello there YouTube and welcome to another video. Today's video I'm going to give you guys tips for both new and returning players. With the anticipation of Brimstone Sands coming out very soon in the next couple of days, I know there's going to be a lot of new players coming in, a lot of returning players coming back, and so I want to get you guys a couple of tips that will help you along the way, set you up for success, and to make sure that you have the most enjoyable experience while playing New World. If you guys find this video helpful and informative, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, be sure to check me out on Twitch at twitch.tv slash palmadelic. With Brimstone launching, I will be doing a 24-hour stream on the launch of Brimstone. Along with on November 2nd, I will also be doing a very long stream, if not another 24-hour stream, for the launch of the Fresh Start servers. So without further ado, let's get into the tips and let's get into the video. Tip number one, Gypsum and Gypsum Orbs, Gypsum Casts. Obviously, as a new player and a returning player that wasn't in the game when Gypsum Casts were introduced and Gypsum Orbs were introduced, there is a lot of different Gypsum Orbs that are obtainable throughout the game. I want to make sure that you guys know which ones to get, which ones are worth your time and the easiest to obtain. The ones I would recommend doing every day or getting hidden stashes by getting hidden stashes you get three diamond gypsum per day which allows you to create a gypsum orb which will allow you to get a gypsum cast to either raise your expertise or get umbral shards to get hidden stashes all you need to do is go outside of any single town hit three trees and by the time you hit three to five trees or so you should get three hidden stashes open those up and you'll obtain diamond gypsum another two very easy obtainable gypsum orbs to get are going to be from the faction vendor once you hit level five in the faction vendor you should be able to buy two gypsum orbs every single day if you don't have enough faction tokens an easy way to get faction tokens every single day is do two to maybe three pvp missions either in reek water shattered mountain or ebon scale reach those are the three places i would recommend doing pvp missions you get those done you come back you'll have enough faction tokens to buy two gypsum orbs every single day the third easiest gypsum orb to get is get 200 cooking once you have reached 200 cooking you can get an aptitude every single day an aptitude will give you an emerald gypsum to get the emerald gypsum you need to make 100 to 150 hearty meals every day which is very simple to make there's five ingredients on the trade post that are very cheap most of the time the easiest uh, recipe to use to make hearty meals to get your emerald gypsum is going to be rice slash string beans pork game meat milk and honey take those five ingredients go to a cooking station make 100 to 150 hearty meals depending on how much you really need and you should get an emerald gypsum every single day another really easy obtainable uh gypsum to get is the garnet gypsum this is requires you to play two games of arena every single day you might have to play two or three to make sure you get your emerald your garnet gypsum but if that's the case just play a couple of games of arena Eat, win or lose you should be able to get a garnet gypsum as well Another easy way to get gypsum cast is play two games of Outpost Rush. If you're nearly not into PvP, go into Outpost Rush, do a bunch of PvE stuff, build up bases and things like that, and uh, you'll still be able to gain your two gypsum every day from Outpost Rush. You just need to play two games and you are good to go. Now, some of the more tedious ways of getting gypsum is doing uh, very high level uh, corrupted monoliths and corrupted portals up in um, Shattered Mountain, Ebon Scale, and Reekwater. Those are a little more tedious. I don't recommend grinding out those every day. Another one that, in my opinion, is a little tedious is getting Obsidium Gypsum. This is going to be killing a uh, open world boss three times over the course of like 15 to 20 minutes to get three Obsidian Gypsums. Uh, really good places to go for that are going to be up uh, at this monastery uh, from this shrine here in Ebon Scale. Another very common place is this church up north of Ebonscale as well, the Sky Song Crypt. Uh, hit this teleportation, hit this teleporter shrine and run all the way up here. There's gonna be a boss in the church, kill him three times in the course of about 15 to 20 minutes and you should get three obsidian gypsum. Another very easy way to get uh, gypsum casts and gypsum orbs is every day, make sure you make your topaz gypsum attunement uh, potion. These are gonna require either earth shell tails, life moth eyes, soul worm tongues, Spinefish fins, salamander slime, lightning beetle, and blight moth dust. These are not very expensive in the shop. You should be able to, uh, in the trade post, you should be able to buy five of these every day. Make your topaz potion. And then what you do is once you go into a dungeon, you should be doing uh, two dungeons every single day. If you do two dungeons a day, pop your topaz potion in the first time you go into one of the dungeons. And once you do that, you uh, make sure you do the higher dungeons or mutators. So Lazarus, uh, Genesis, Dynasty, Tempest, um, 
Dynasty Mutator, Depths Mutator, Barnacles Mutator. Once you do one of those dungeons, the first time you run through it, pop your Topaz Potion, you'll get 10 Topaz, you'll get two Gypsum Orbs. If you finish two of those dungeons every day, that's four Gypsum Orbs total. Tip number two, I wanna talk about armor. If you're a new and returning player, I want to make sure that you guys are staying away from void bent. Do not spend your resources, your time, your your money on void bent uh, armor. It is not good. It is not good for uh, PvP. It's somewhat decent in PvE, but in my opinion, it's also really bad in PvE. I think void bent armor needs to be adjusted. If you are a newer returning player, do not invest your time, your gold, your resources in crafting or buying void bent armor in any sense at all you are better off if you are a new player and you're looking to make uh an armor set for uh pvp you are better off starting with some of these perks like resilient um freedom uh resilient shirking fort pieces are going to be uh, somewhat a little more expensive uh, but if you can start with just getting some of these pieces like resilient freedom resilient shirking fort uh resilient elemental aversion um resilient physical aversion uh, some of the two perker uh, armor is going to be just so much more advantageous for you than buying uh, things like like void bent as you can see a lot of these pieces on the market really aren't that expensive con strength heavy resilient shirking fort 2000 gold really not that hard to, to come by so i would recommend using your gold or your resources your time uh, all that stuff on just getting uh, a lot better two perk armor than void bent uh, so getting resilient on your armor is really good i would recommend getting three to four uh, a minimum of four if you're going to be into wars freedom is another very good one like i said shirking fort is going to be another huge one uh, other really good perks are going to be elemental aversion uh, for dex players uh, for like muskets and bows physical aversion is going to be extremely good as well and then another uh, really good perk to have in your armor are going to be cooldown uh, reduction perks like refreshing refreshing evasion uh, along with refreshing ward as well so my tip to you there is do not waste your time money gold resources all that stuff into void bent armor uh, try to buy two perk armor depending on your build and what you're going to play with um, a lot cheaper uh, from the trade post uh, resilient freedom resilient shirking for it that kind of stuff if you are playing on a new fresh start server um, void bent might come into play a little bit but i still would recommend trying to get uh, just resilient and uh, any other like second perk whether it's a weapon perk in your armor freedom shirking for it, elemental aversion physical aversion and, and that stuff on a fresh start server because it's going to be a brand new economy i still would recommend trying to uh, go for those things over void bent tip number three i would invest into ward armor what is ward armor it is a uh, resistance against pve mobs uh, that are really helpful not only for just open world uh, bosses but especially dungeons i would recommend in investing in pieces with corruption ward on them uh, to start because the most dungeons in the game actually are corrupted with dynasty tempest and depths and the new dungeon uh, coming in brimstone is also going to be uh corruption slash ancient but i would invest in getting uh, a pve set of corruption ward um, and then another one that i would really invest in is angry earth ward for running genesis these are going to be really good speed running um armor pieces with angry the the reason you want ward on a lot of your stuff in dungeons is it allows you to go less con more damage uh, into your attributes, which are gonna help you uh, speed run through some of these dun dungeons, do them a lot faster. Once you can get these pieces up to 625, you'll be able to run M10s. Once you're running M10s, you're gonna get a lot more Umbral Shards, a lot uh, better drops, gold drops, uh, bind on equip, bind on pickup. You're gonna be able to sell stuff for uh, a little bit of gold and make some money. So my third tip is definitely start to invest uh, once you're starting to dip into PVE a lot more, a lot heavily, more heavily, once you reach level 60, is uh, invest in ward pieces for yourself. It'll benefit you in the long run. It kind of stinks in the beginning trying to grind this stuff up, but once you invest and you have it, you're good to go. Uh, with the with the announcement from the devs that raids are going to be coming out someday, uh, ward pieces are going to be huge uh for just everywhere in pve so definitely invest tip number four is basics in pvp if you are looking to get into wars become a better player follow these uh, couple of tips the first tip i'm going to give is dodging dodging is an extremely big mechanic in new world i see a lot of players uh, making the mistake of using their dodge mechanic and their stamina bar on just dodging to move around you do not want to do that. You want to really hold your dodge 
your dodging to be able to actually iframe abilities and be able to actually dodge things that are happening to you. Once you can get that down and you get really good at iframing, it is going to make you a substantially better player. Do not use your dodges uh, freely and just use them to move around and in a, in a panic state. Sometimes take a hit or two from the enemy player and then wait for them to do an attack that you can actually dodge. Once you do that, you're going to actually get away from that player instead of just uh, stamming yourself out um, and, and going into a gray bar state. This is the biggest tip I can give you in PvP because it is one of the most frequently mistaken uh, mechanics in the game of PvP players is players that stam themselves out constantly on a consistent basis and just it causes them to die in wars in opr in open world and things like that the reason i say stamming yourself out is you can see on the bottom bar there's that yellow bar for your stamina right once you dodge and you go into a gray state you actually run slower walk slower all of that you go into an exhaustive state if you keep your stamina bar at yellow you're going to make sure that you are running at a at the highest speed that you can to get away from your enemies at all times so what you want to not do is go into that gray barred state because then you will become exhausted and because you are it takes a, a decent amount of time for your stamina to come back you might die in that sense because now you one can't block or dodge away from the enemy so try to uh try to avoid this at all cost really manage your stamina bar and you will become a better player tip number five i want to talk about making gold an easy way to make gold now when you first hit 60 especially on a fresh start server it can kind of get difficult to make gold especially in large lump sums of gold um, fresh start server this might be a little more difficult but if you are on a server that isn't fresh start and you're on a server that people are transferring in and out of all the time there's already big companies there there's already a, a, a heavy pvp scene there my biggest tip to you for a new or returning player is ask around all the companies that are on your server. Ask the big companies that own some of the bigger territories um, and ask if there's any way that you can help out to get paid by that company. Now, my biggest tip to you would be to approach them and not ask about wars and war slots and getting into wars. I would start by just saying, hey, I'm a new slash returning player. I'm not uh, crazy about getting into wars. That's something I'm looking a little more down the line at, but I need to make money and I'm wondering if I can help your company um, and be able to benefit from that. The way you do that is most companies in the game right now, especially the PVP heavy uh, war companies, are paying their players and paying their company players by by pushing influence to put uh, those territories into a state of conflict to be able to war in those territories. If you help those companies put uh, push bars and uh, do run PVP missions when they are to help uh, put their influence up to put uh, themselves into a, into a war in different territories along with doing their invasions. Uh, a lot of companies pay pay out for that kind of thing so so i would recommend approaching some of these companies and saying hey if i help you guys push influence push your bars uh and do uh territory pushes along with doing like um invasions and things like that anything that i can help out with without doing wars is there a way i can get paid every week uh, a couple thousand gold for doing that doing that stuff i promise you i'm sure there is a company out there that will pay you to help them with those things this is an easy way to uh, make a somewhat amount of gold for you uh, even if it's just a weekly basis of like thirty thousand to fifty thousand gold that's going to be a lot for a new player that's going to be able to help you invest in things like the ward gear i was talking about two perk armor all those things better weapons better stuff for pvp pve whatever it is tip number six if you are looking to get into wars i recommend these builds if these are builds that you want to run and these that you want to play and you want to get into wars here are the builds that are mainly used in wars great axe warhammer melee bruisers both medium and light Void Gauntlet, Ice Gauntlet, typically used in a medium. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm screaming left side. Oh, scream left side. Healers, which are typically Life Staffs, Rapiers, or Life Staff Void Gauntlets. Take a second, take them, take a second, take a second.
Blunderbuss Ice Gauntlets typically typically played in either light, medium, or heavy. Yep. Rage, I'm with you. This guy's one. Good shit. Good kill. Bows. Right here. I'm, heal I'm healing okay. myself. Pito S. One shot dead. Look, look back right, back right. Look, I missed the comes. I'm, I'm healing myself here. Um, yeah, Clapping, no. bump heart. Hell, hell, hell. Dead. Tigger's under bump heart here. Right side, look right side. Uh, Muskets. Muskets left side, left side. Right. By the water, he's, he's hit. Saving, uh, whatever. Like he spawns right now. He's one. Now he's one. He healed. Uh, kill, kill our side left. Kill our side left. Oh, out of it. Fire staff, ice gauntlet. And sword and shield yeah, tanks. If you are looking to get in wars and you want to play in wars, I definitely recommend starting off trying to find a build that suits you the best and what you're most interested in playing, uh, because those are the most commonly used builds in wars. I'm not going to go fully in depth on each and every single build, but start out with playing those two weapons and try to figure out uh, what is going to be the best. Ask around, ask company members, ask people in global chat, ask friends, all that stuff of what the best armor is, what the best weapon perks are, those kinds of things. If you're interested in Void Gauntlet, Ice Gauntlet, or Great Axe Warhammer, I do have two YouTube videos explaining those builds right now. Be sure to check those out on my channel. But once again, my tip to you is if you're looking to get in wars, try investing into building your character around those builds. Those are the most commonly used builds in wars. That is going to be it for this video. Those are going to be my tips and tricks um, for new and returning players. Just some of the very small uh, things that I think new players should know coming into the game along with just returning players that have, haven't played for a long time things that have changed and uh, I want to make sure that if you guys follow these tips I promise you you will see success in growing your character a little faster building out your person uh, being able to uh, complete a lot of different things within the game at a, a, a much faster and things like that so if you guys find this video informative be sure to like the video once again subscribe to the channel thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys in the next video